The bit of that I found most difficult uh, w w was the notion people had that I was somehow emotionally, sexually, morally sorted, balanced, saintly, um, that the, the religious package, the truth package, I was quite certain about, you know, the, um, uh, and it, it certainly wasn't true in my case, and I don't think it's true in many cases, because clergy are drawn into that particular way of life for lots of reasons, um, very often to cloak their own inadequacies, um, very often idealistic reasons they want to serve. Um, and I remember as a wee boy when I was being asked why I wanted to be a priest, I remember saying, I want to help people. You know, that, you, you get that. Uh, there is a, a sense in which um, the priest is the person for others. They're um, to be available. Uh, you're supposed to open your door to everyone. You're not supposed to have a private life, but you, everyone needs a private life, and th that's one of the big tensions and difficulties. And so you always have a, a kind of a sense of disappointment with yourself that you're not dramatically, spectacularly good and holy. You're, you're ordinary, muddled, lustful, doubting human being, but you've found yourself in this role. Uh, you wear different clothes. Uh, people put their expectations on you. Um, and you can do two things with that. You can, you, can, you can react in an exaggerated way by trying to show people that you're, you know, um, a boy among boys, you know, that you, you go to the pub and you kind of, you know, tell dirty jokes and you do, you're over, overcompensating. Or you can try to kid on and act the role out and be this kind of great, austere figure. And I looked it, because I was, a, I'm, I'm a very big man, I'm tall, austere, and I could look the monk park, I could look the forbidding, kind of um, intimidating priest who's got it all sorted. Um, I remember once in an encounter group being asked to draw a caricature of myself, what I thought I came over as, and I drew this great, solemn black figure pointing his finger at people. Um, but it wasn't me inside. I, I was capable of that. I mean, I can be um, tough and, and assertive and authoritative uh, fight. Um, but all the time, there are lots of other layers inside you. Um, I think probably uh, my generation was more prone to that. I think, I think clergy today are much more honest about the fact that they're also human and they should have a they should have a family life, they should have time off. I, I hardly give myself time off, I mean, one day a week, um, and even that was open to intrusions. Um, and it's all because I suppose you're, you're still trying to give yourself utterly away to this, um, to this great lover in the sky who may not even be there. What you gradually do, I think, is you gradually learn to know a bit more about yourself and what you're capable for, capable of and what you're up for, um, and maybe to have a bit more um, understanding, even a bit of pity for yourself. I, I love a, a Gerard Manley Hopkins poem, My Own Heart, Let Me More Have Pity On, Let Me Live to My Sad Self Hereafter, Kind. Um, so you learn that, yeah, you too are human and flawed, say yes to your flaws, accept them and understand them. But it took me a long time uh, to move into a kind of self-honesty about all of that. And I think probably the training of clergy today is less extreme. Um, they make them understand their own humanity so that um, you're not always trying to be the hero. Um, this wee boy who roamed the hills and loved cowboy movies was always wanting to be the hero. Um, and you're not a hero to yourself, ultimately. Um, and it was quite a relief when uh, gradually, as my life unfolded, I realized um, that I was who I was and not any of those roles I tried to fill. Um, and writing the book, I discovered that I really psychologically was not very cut out to obey institutions. I'm a bit more anarchic in the sense that I, I tend to um, treat rules as relatively useful, not as absolutely useful. Um, and from the very 
early stages of my ministry, I was breaking rule. I was marrying divorced people, blessing gay unions, all of that stuff. Not in a flamboyant, uh, notice me way. Um, no one knew I was doing this stuff. It just struck me. A lot of the rules and regulations were silly. They were daft. The, the saying of Jesus that I love most is the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Everything was made for us. And therefore, if the rule gets in the way of our humanity, a good, flourishing, kindly humanity, bend the rule or disobey it on that particular um, occasion. Drive through the red light because there's no one, in, no one within a mile of you. But to sit there obediently at the red light, which people do and they tut tut, um, I found that I was um, disinclined to obey red lights if it didn't make any sense. Um, and that's fine, but if you find yourself as a leader in an institution whose rules you are subverting because you think a lot of it is relative, some of it is actually unjust, that creates real tension. And I started becoming a bit of a scandal to myself. Um, and I upset a lot of people because here, here's this guy who's now a bishop who's supposed to be standing up for the rules and, 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 and promoting them and promulgating them and hammering them into people. And he's disobeying them. He's challenging them. He's subverting them. Um, so I got... I ended up in a funny place. Um, and, um, but I didn't know when I set out, um, age 12, that my psychogenetic makeup was going to collide with the institution I was giving my life to. But what the hell, that's what happened.